Voyager 2 has been drifting quietly into the abyss for more than for decades, far beyond planet's reach. In the past, it crossed the cold edge of the solar system into the great unknown, a phantom ship launched in the 1970s carrying Earth's last whisper. We imagined it would fade quietly, its signal dimming into cosmic noise. But it didn't. Recently, it sent something back. Not just a routine transmission, not just data. A message, one that made NASA scientists cease. A sudden spike, an unforeseen change, a clear line crossed, and with it, confirmation of something humanity had feared for centuries but never had the courage to say out loud. The edge of our solar system is well defined. It is a wall. Beyond that, something shifts. When Voyager 2 crossed what's known as the Helipause, the boundary where the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins, expectations of a gradual, poetic transition dissolved. Scientists believed that the solar wind would fade into the interstellar medium like mist dissolving in air. But Voyager 2 detected the opposite. The transition was swift, sudden. One moment inside the sun's protective bubble, the next beyond it. Radiation increased by more than 70%. Plasma density spiked. The magnetic field itself shifted. It was like stepping through a door into a completely different room. The signatures were abrupt, sharp, as though a membrane had been pierced. What stunned researchers most was not merely the existence of a boundary, but its precision. The sun's heliosphere, once thought to bleed gently into space, was revealed as a distinct shield, a barrier that had been protecting the solar system from the chaos of the galaxy. Voyager to proved our solar system is not suspended idly in space. It is safeguarded. For decades, the heliosphere had been theoretical, a bubble of magnetic and plasma energy shaped by solar output, but Voyager to confirmed it. It was more than speculation. It was vital. Conditions inside this shield are relatively stable. Radiation filtered, space weather controlled, chaos kept at bay. But the moment Voyager to stepped out, all of that changed. The spacecraft's data revealed chaotic magnetic flux, unpredictable particle energy, and hazardous surges of galactic radiation. The solar system was no longer just a lonely outpost, it was a fortress, and beyond its confines lay an unregulated frontier. The smooth curves and soft boundaries of textbooks were gone, replaced by sharp spikes, hard numbers, and terrifying implications. Voyager 2 was no longer merely drifting, it was being bombarded. The sun's magnetic field, almost perfectly aligned with the field between stars, created a phenomenon no one expected, one that raised questions about whether the galaxy's own structure shapes the space around us. This was not just a field. It was a threshold, and crossing it had consequences. One of the most shocking revelations from Voyager 2's data was that the heliosphere isn't fixed. It breathes. It expands and contracts with the sun's 11-year cycle, altering its shape and thickness as solar activity rises and falls. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 did not cross at the same location or distance, and these differences were not random, but shaped by the sun's rhythm. The heliosphere is not a neat sphere. It is distorted, comet-shaped, pulsing like a living organism. At times it stretches, at times it recoils. When the solar wind weakens, the boundary draws closer, letting more cosmic radiation seep inside. When it strengthens, the barrier expands, protecting us more effectively. The disturbing conclusion, Earth's protection is not permanent. It fluctuates. It can fail. Voyager 2's abrupt step into the galactic medium revealed just how thin that veil truly is. The universe beyond is not void. It is violent, unpredictable, and much closer than we imagined. In 2019, something strange happened. Voyager 2, dependable for over 40 years, went silent. Not for long, just a few hours, but in those hours, every instrument stopped. No commands were issued from Earth. No signals sent. Then, just as suddenly as it had gone dark, the spacecraft came back, rebooted, recovered. The official explanation, hardware aging, perhaps a minor software flaw. 
But buried in the technical reports were unexplained electromagnetic spikes, changes in the magnetic field, and surges in particle energy just before the blackout. The lingering question was not just what caused the failure, but what Voyager to had just passed through. Some suggested a pocket of highly energized plasma, a ripple from a distant supernova, or a shockwave from an interstellar event. Others quietly wondered whether Voyager had entered a layer so alien we had no way of predicting it. If that were the case, it wasn't merely a system failure. It was a response. When Voyager had stepped outside the heliosphere, it began recording fluctuations in radiation and plasma density that defied models. These weren't random spikes. They were dynamic, persistent, and patterned, almost like a kind of weather. The idea that space beyond the sun's reach might have weather had once been dismissed as poetic exaggeration, but Voyager 2 was detecting waves of high-energy particles, sudden directional shifts in the magnetic field, and surges of galactic rays that echoed with a strange rhythm. Initially, scientists tried to link these disturbances to known solar events, flares or coronal mass ejections rippling through the helipause. However, when those timelines did not coincide, they turned their backs. The patterns began aligning with a distant galactic phenomenon, which may be relics of supernovae or the collective force of massive stellar winds far from our system. It seemed as though Voyager to had stepped foot into a bustling area kind of sea between stars with no visible currents and unseen tides. At this point, the spacecraft was away from the sun's barrier, completely exposed and afloat in a storm we never anticipated finding. One of the most surprising outcomes from the crossing of Voyager 2 was the near-perfect alignment of the sun's magnetic field with the galactic magnetic field beyond. This revelation left theorists scrambling. For decades, turbulence was predicted by models at a magnetic clash known as the Heliopause Blending Zone where solar and galactic forces would twist into chaos. But Voyager didn't find that. Instead, the transition went smoothly, as if the fields were already synchronized. There were the possibilities, both alarming in equal measure, either the region outside our solar system had been shaped and twisted by the flow of the sun over time, gradually evolving into alignment or the area was already inherently aligned. That would mean the sun's interstellar neighborhood had evolved within a magnetic harmony that possibly covers a significantly larger portion of the galaxy than initially thought. It also means cosmic rays might flow in more easily when fields are aligned, creating effective entryways into our solar system during periods of quiet solar activity. This wasn't just a magnetic surprise, it was a paradigm shift. The concept that the structure of the galaxy may already account for, or even plan for, the sun's magnetic reach challenges every model of star-to-star -star interaction. Suddenly, space appeared less chaotic. It appeared organized. Voyager's data continued to flow. A whisper began to spread among mission insiders and theorists, one they were not prepared to record but could not ignore. The heliosphere could be more than just a boundary. What if it acted as a checkpoint? The sharpness of the transition, the perfect alignment of the field, and the regular spikes in radiation across both Voyager 1 and 2 suggested not just a physical interface, but one that is responsive. Some proposed the boundary may be flexible, changing its location or intensity in response to pressure from both directions. However, a more controversial notion emerged that the boundary itself may function as a kind of tripwire for the galaxy, a location where, upon entering, objects are measured, exposed, recorded. This was no claim of aliens, no assertion of intelligent design, but simply the recognition that Voyager's arrival sounded organized, layered, and responsive. And if that is true, it would imply that each object leaving the solar system does not simply depart the sun's territory, it makes its presence known to the galaxy beyond. Voyager to may have unknowingly triggered more than just measurements. It may have sent a signal revealing more about us than we ever intended. Attached to Voyager 2 is a message, a golden disc containing humanity's greetings, sounds, music, and diagrams. A stunning interstellar attempt at diplomacy. 
but within that disk are detailed instructions how to locate Earth, how to read the disk, and how to understand who we are. For a long time, this was praised as a sign of hope, but based on what Voyager to found, some now see it differently. If the boundary separating our system from the galaxy is not a gradual dimming but rather a sharply defined edge if it responds, if it watches then, what does it mean that we attached a map to our home on the very probe that crossed that edge? Were we extending a hand or displaying a vulnerability? With every transmission Voyager to sends, we validate our intelligence, our technology, and our location. And if someone is listening out there or worse, responding then the golden record may become more than a message. It might be an invitation we cannot retract. It wasn't supposed to last this long. It was not intended to be returned, revealing information that could shake our comprehension of the universe. Yet, decades after its launch, traversing the icy silence of space, it has crossed a line that was never meant to be so easily crossed. And what it found wasn't the peaceful emptiness we once imagined. It found change. It found pressure. It found structure. It proved what many had silently feared. We are not wandering aimlessly through a void. Our solar system is shielded. And outside that shield, the rules begin to bend. Radiation intensifies. Fields align. Particles shift. Space and time distort. The boundary is firm. It is sharp. And what lies beyond it appears less like a sea and more like a gate, a cutoff point into a realm with no regard for our gentle sun or Earth's clear skies. A realm where apocalyptic calamities rage and fields shift to frequencies we are only beginning to comprehend. And still, the golden record is there a beautiful, reckless representation of our optimism, sailing with our coordinates, our biology, our engraved identity in gold. A salutation or a flare sent across a line we now know to be significantly more complex and receptive than we ever dreamed. As a result, the question persists in the void between the stars, was Voyager to merely an explorer, or was it a signal? Do you believe Voyager to made a discovery unnatural at the edge of our solar system? Was the heliosphere just a physical obstruction or something else? If this thought makes you reconsider the boundaries of our universe, you might feel a chill down your spine. 